January 1996. Two PhD students have an idea for a new type of search engine that doesn't just serve results based on the number of times a term appears on a page, but by ranking the quality of each page based on the number of links pointing back to it. Two years later, these students would go on to found a company. The company was named Google. June 2020. One randomly generated character with no academic qualifications has no original ideas for how to make a <laughs> has no original ideas for how to make a new search engine. But it seemed like a cool idea at the time. Search engines. How many times a day do you use them? Services like Google and DuckDuckGo are an integral part of our lives. We use them all the time. And we don't really stop to think about how they work. But recently, I've been working on making my own from scratch. And that's forced me to learn the ins and outs of how they work. So let's dive into this. So in order to have a functioning search engine, I found I need three main processes always running. Crawling, parsing, and indexing. The first is web crawling. This is how you get your information in the first place. It's just an automated process of visiting websites and downloading their information. So you start with what's called a seed. This is your starting point. The first website you visit. And depending on what seed you choose, you should be able to visit almost the entire web just from this starting point. Because you pull all of the links from that site, visit each of them, and then pull every single link from each of those links that you just visited. And from this, you crawl through the entire web. The second function I decided to call parsing. And this is something that's kind of an intermediary step that could be lumped in with either indexing or crawling. I just decided to have it as its own process, and I'll show you why. In my crawling function, I download the full web contents of a page I visit. What the parsing does is it takes that downloaded content and it pulls the visible text portion of the web page for the indexing process and then it pulls out all the links off of the web page for future crawling. So essentially, it's an intermediary process that allows the crawling and the indexing to work together smoothly. Lastly, we have indexing. This is the function that looks through the visible text portion of the web page and tries to extract what's meaningful from it. This is the process that allows you to have the most creativity. So this could be something as simple as a list of each word on the web page and how often it shows up, or something as complex as word associations and pulling actual intent from a document. So because there's so much opportunity here to get really complex with how to tackle this, it is the part that is the most processor heavy. Now, I decided to focus first on the parsing and crawling together and really get these as solid as possible because these two processes work interdependently. In order to have more links to crawl, I need to parse out links from more documents. So I have these two functions run alongside each other and just go back and forth from one to the other. I decided to start with the Wikipedia homepage as my seed for a couple reasons. First, this should give us pretty quality results right from the beginning, just because if you think about it, most Google search results give you a Wikipedia result within the first page anyway. So that already kind of gives you an advantage. Second, Wikipedia uses a ton of links, and so it's a great starting place to get a lot of information quickly. Just how quickly? Well, here's what happened. I started on the Wikipedia homepage. I downloaded that, and that had 266 links on it. So I visited those 266 links, and when I parsed those out and pulled the links out of them, I ended up with 102,312 links to visit. That is a lot of sites that I need to crawl now. So 
it's going to get pretty slow and the data is going to be a problem. With these 267 sites that I've downloaded so far, that is 55.2 megabytes. Now, that's not much, that's not too bad, honestly. But if I use those numbers and apply them to the 102,000 pages that I still have to download, that will be around 21 gigabytes. That's still not too bad, but from what I've researched, in order to get to the spot where you can start having quality results on a search engine, you need around 2 billion web pages crawled. So that means I'm gonna need a couple terabytes of storage. So I bought an old Xeon server off of eBay for just a hundred bucks and then bought a four terabyte hard drive as a starting point. This still is nowhere near enough storage space for a true full-fledged search engine. But for a homemade one, that's not a bad starting place, especially considering that I'm not downloading images at all. If I were going to be downloading images and trying to have an image search engine, I would need petabytes of storage, which I am not going to pay for. So four terabytes will have to be what we're working with here. So I'm kind of curious to test this out with just the 267 sites that I've scraped so far. I haven't implemented any kind of indexing yet. So all I'm going to do is just send a search term and if the full search term appears in a web page, then that should really be a good result. And if any of the words from my search appear in the website, then that will be somewhat of a good result. So let's see how this works. Let's try something really simple today. So we get the main page of Wikipedia. Uh, excellent result. <laughs> but that means that it is recognizing this term is appearing on this website. Let's give it to you. Let's search for a common name like Obama. This gives us 10 results, which actually isn't bad. Let's go ahead and see what the top ranked result is. Let's see, it looks like it's returning a page for someone named Julia Gillard, and she is a prime minister of Australia. So at least we're getting something political and a political figure who is looks like she's had a decent number of run-ins with Obama. So not bad, that's something. Let's try. Try something a little longer. Two hundred and sixty six results. Now, the reason for this is because right now this is just saying if any of these words appear on any of the sites that we've parsed. So honestly, it's not a real result, but let's go ahead and take a look at what has the highest score here and see how that look. It has 22 instances of how to and it has searched the as well. as well as the web. So obviously horrible results we're getting here, but at least it's pulling something vaguely relevant. And for only having 266, 267 web, web pages to pull from so far, this is about as good as we can ask for, right? So what I plan to do next is set up my little mini server, have it continually scraping new web pages and parsing out the links and text from it and then while it's working on that, I can figure out a good indexing process. So with what I just did a few moments ago, each time I try and give it a search term, it looks through every single document for that search term. That is very inefficient. So for the indexing, we essentially need to find a quick way to give references to where search terms can be found on websites. So. That's gonna take quite a bit of time and that's gonna be my next project for this coming week is figuring out how can I apply a good indexing process 
And then maybe I can even figure out some good machine learning ways to figure out word associations or anything like that. Let me know in the comments if you have any good suggestions on how to tackle a project like this, um, especially if you have any good advice for the indexing and how I might want to pull that off. I know it's going to take quite a bit of thought to make something actually meaningful, but I'm really hoping that I can actually get semi-decent results. I know no matter what, it's not going to stand up to something like Google because they have thousands of computers running constantly to try and get the best results for you. But I'm hoping I can get something at least halfway decent and um, let's see where this takes us. Make sure to leave a like. If you enjoyed this video, share it with someone you know. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.